Hi guys, uh, so my name is David Tomlinson, uh, the Global Brand Ambassador for Weekly Neil. Uh, we're here today with partnership with uh, Tahora, uh, Tahora app. Uh, we're going to be making some delicious drinks. Um, it's the best time uh, for you lovers that want to get romantic out there uh, with Valentine's Day. Um, so we're going to take you through a series of drinks. Uh, we're going to style them up from good, better, best uh, in terms of difficulty. Um, so hopefully you can replicate one of these uh, at home over the weekend and impress your lover. Um, if you don't, they're also great by yourself. Um, if, you, if you don't have a seat in Fort, you don't get anyone this weekend. Uh, Whitley Neal's here to, to supply the good stuff. All right, so first things first, uh, just before we talk shop about brand, uh, as long as you guys have a stove at home, uh, we're gonna be making a quick syrup together. Uh, just obviously the syrup you're gonna be making is gonna be used in all the drinks. Um, and obviously hence why we wanted to start with that. Process normally takes roughly a couple of minutes uh, to cool down as well. All right, so first things first here, yeah, uh, we've got a little gas stove. Uh, just obviously pop that on using a lighter without trying to blow up your kitchen. Okay, there we go. All right, so pop the pot on there. Uh, very simple, a lot of people get confused uh, when making sugar, sugar syrup, very easy. Any cocktail bar um, obviously has that. Uh, you, there's traditionally stuff called gom or traditional sugar. And so gom is just a, a two to one ratio, uh, which we're gonna be making now. The first thing you're gonna do while that's getting nice and warm, when I say two to one ratio, that's two to one or whatever you have in your house. I'm gonna be using a just a regular glass. So basically one cup or one glass full of water, all right, to two cups of sugar. All right, so as simple as that, guys, that's all it is. So any mixologist that gives you any of his details, you guys don't need it, all right, you can make it at home. All right, two to one. All right, yes, that is a lot of sugar. For those of you that don't know, liqueurs, if any of you drink liqueurs at home, uh, to be a liqueur, um, an alcohol has to be 27% or below, but have 150 grams of sugar. So for those of you that like your liqueurs, uh, great for winter, but not so good on the dad bod, huh? All right, so give that a nice stir, guys. Uh, you roughly need uh, for this to cook, I'm gonna push this to the side uh, while we have a chat. Um, just keep an eye on it as well. You're gonna roughly need a couple minutes, probably two to three minutes um, for that sugar syrup to cook down. Once you start seeing it reduce and it loses its color, uh, that white, uh, it starts getting clear. You obviously know that it's obviously cooking down. I need you to add roughly five to 10 raspberries, fresh raspberries. Um, so all of you obviously on the shopping list, just from any grocery store down the road, we'll pop those in, stir them out, and then I'll show you guys what to do. Okay, but first things first, uh, the reason why I'm obviously involved in this industry and enjoy uh, the gin category is this beautiful brand here, Whitley Neal. Um, I came from South Africa, been living in London for the last couple of years and traveling the globe, uh, teaching the Chinese, the Russians and Americans um, and a couple of other cultures on how to actually drink this product. Uh, very unique, it's now the UK's number one premium gin. Uh, so at the moment, Whitley Neal is a 1.3 million case brand. Uh, from five years ago when I started, it was 50,000 cases. So roughly 3,000% growth in four years. So really good product. Moved away from traditional style gin to these style gins. We call them flavored gins uh, or compounded gin. Um, so what we have here is Whitley Neal Raspberry. Great for Valentine's Day. Uh, great for any time of the year, actually. Great for summer, great for spring. Uh, but I guess, you know, raspberries, you know, kind of that, I want to say kind of London summer, um, you know, Wimbledon, strawberries and cream, um, you know, Pims, you know, when I think of the flavor profile, very outdoors, very sharing. Um, and that's what flavored gin's about, the, the quintessential British tipple. Um, so for me, Whitney Neal flavors have boomed the market. We have another one called Rhubarb and Ginger, which is our number one. Uh, but the raspberries are second biggest skew. Um, and obviously you guys will be tasting wah today with these simple cocktail serves. All right, so Whitney Neal raspberry um, obviously is available on that bundle um, online. Um, as well as pretty much any grocery you go to, whether it's Tesco, Sainsbury's, Morrison's, Amazon, or online as well uh, with that too. All right, so without further ado, um, so let's have a look here. Um, I think your syrup should be good. Um, if it hasn't been cooking well enough in terms of uh, temperature, just turn it up. Okay, I'm gonna have to light it again, light the kitchen up. Perfect. Uh, what you are looking for, um, just an example here, is you're looking for that in terms of consistency. So where does the red color come from? That is from the fresh raspberries that you pop in there and obviously give that a stir and break them down. Uh, the raspberries obviously add this uh, beautiful little color to it that we're gonna be adding into our cocktails and it just elevates that, that flavor experience, which is obviously what we're trying to do with Woodley Neal. Okay, 
So first things first, guys, with your syrup, um, like I said to you, roughly five to ten. It's, don't worry about that. Okay, so I'm going to pop a couple in there like that. Cool. All right, give that a good stir. Um, what's going to happen, you'll see with your, uh, your pot, um, if it's on the stove and it's at a high heat, uh, your raspberries should flesh out. They should break quite easily. Um, and when they start fleshing out, you'll start getting pips and sediment, and that's where the flavor is from all your raspberries. A little tip if you guys want, um, a couple things actually. Uh, it's also quite nice to freeze your raspberries or freeze your berries before putting them in. It actually bleeds out a bit more color. And what we're gonna do before we start for your three cocktails, number one, you're gonna need a beautiful gin and tonic goblet. Number two, a gin secco flute glass. And number three, a nice little coupe. Okay, all three of those, make sure you grab them out. Before we start, pop all of those in the deep freezer. Okay, little trick. Right, this one might break, eh? All right, generally, generally if it breaks, try not blame it on your, your spouse at home. Uh, Valentine's won't go too well then, huh? So there we go, keep stirring that out. All right, it's gonna be a couple minutes, as I said to you, you'll start seeing them flesh out. If they haven't broken yet, um, make sure that you obviously can actually break them through with a fork or spoon as well. Um, but as I said to you, roughly two to three minutes on the stove at a high heat, um, and then you obviously need to let that cool afterwards. So very happy with that, okay? Um, obviously we're gonna be using that in our cocktails, but just wanted to take you through the simple syrup process. To elevate that as well, maybe adding a tea bag is delicious. I love uh, making a homemade tea syrup with all my cocktails. Popping a tea bag in, even some fresh mint, um, anything you can find in the fridge if you wanna elevate that flavor. But Keeping it nice and simple, raspberries, sugar, and water. Okay, so the raspberry syrup. Okay, so I'm gonna take that off. Pop that to the side. Okay, so what you're gonna find, guys, with your um, your pot, um, is you're gonna find the raspberries are obviously broken. Um, it should release a beautiful light red color um, into the liquid. Um, you are gonna see a bit of sediment. Don't worry about that. There's three ways we can obviously attack that. If you guys have a sieve at home, popping that into a sieve over, a, over your basin uh, just to obviously separate um, those seeds. Um, again, they are natural. Keeping the seeds in is also great for your gin and tonics. Um, I think there's other fruits like passion fruits and watermelon and grapefruits, which is really nice actually having the fresh sediment in it. Um, so it's completely up to you. Uh, you guys can obviously do that ad hoc. Um, but yeah, your sugar syrup, five minutes. Uh, preferably if you could, pop that into a container and leave that in the fridge or even just put that stove straight in the fridge, okay? So I'm gonna leave that to the side. All right, and that is our sugar syrup to start. Once you have decanted that, guys, and you've obviously put that into a vessel at home, um, just make sure it's thick enough in terms of the heat. It obviously should look like that in terms of color. Beautiful consistency. If you cook it longer than five minutes, it's actually gonna turn into a, a, a very thick viscosity. So just be careful. It's gonna be really thick in terms of profile. So the first drink we're going to be doing uh, with Tahora and you guys is um, the Love and Tonic. Um, so Whitney Neal Raspberry, uh, we've actually just finished a relationship uh, building exercise with our brothers in arms, Fever Tree. Um, so Fever Tree pairs really well with our Whitney Neal range. Um, and we're going with the Aromatic Tonic, uh, a very unique pairing, uh, but obviously something that actually worked really well for us in that incubation session that we did with them um, at the end of last year. So aromatic tonic, uh, you can find that any grocer as well, uh, any traditional grocer, um, but really pairs nicely with the raspberry, guys. So beautiful flavor combinations. Uh, we're gonna be garnishing that uh, with strawberry, okay? And fresh mint, okay? So I'm gonna show you guys a little sneaky technique. We're gonna make a strawberry rose uh, in terms of the garnish, okay? To obviously impress your, your partner at home, okay? So guys, your glasses, you put them in the, in the fridge, grab your copa glass up first. Right, obviously it didn't have too much time, but you can feel it, obviously the temperature of that. Um, as I said to you guys, one of the most important factors for me consuming drinks is the temperature, um, ice and temperature. So making sure your glasses are nice and cold, uh, your ice blocks, you have nice big rustic or uh, kind of raw ice blocks. You guys can obviously make them at home too, but the problem comes in with temperature when it's too hot and small ice cubes when it dilutes. Okay, so just making sure those two top tips you guys have. 
First things first when you're making a good gin and tonic, for me, is always putting enough ice in. Okay, so again, we're at home. I'm not going to complain here. Popping the ice cubes in directly. All right. Always nice putting a couple ice cubes in first. If your glass is not cold, just stirring it with a spoon. Just roughly for about 20 seconds, will actually cool your glass down to the perfect temperature. Okay. That also looks pretty cool for your partner too. Okay. It makes it look like you know what you're doing at home. Okay. Right, second thing, um, and for me probably, I guess the most important thing is the Johnny Double. Um, so the brand was founded by Johnny Neal um, in his mid 40s in London. Johnny Neal, as of last year, got voted as the best flavored gin in the world by Marlebone Gin and Whitley Neal. So top of his game in terms of flavor, um, in terms of the brand, um, and obviously doing something right within the category of gin. All right, so first things first, a good healthy double, but the Johnny Double is a 50, me 50 mil measure and a bit for the tax man. All right, so the Johnny Double is a two and a half, generally, all right? Depending on how boozy you want to make your drink or how much your partner's talking at home, you might want to make it a triple, okay? All right, second thing, a little trick when you're making a gin and tonic. Um, a big thing is also the bubbles. Um, I'll show you a little trick. If you guys get one of your cocktail spoons at home, you can actually pour your cocktail or your tonic down your spoon. All right, what that does is it also helps alleviate too much carbonation into your drink. What happens with too much bubbles is that you actually lose flavor. The bubbles uh, dilute the flavor profile of gin. So just a small technique with your gin and tonic, just popping it down the spoon, that's perfect. All right, I'm gonna pop that to the side. All right guys, what we're gonna be doing is topping that up with some extra ice cubes. All right, just like that. And what we're gonna be doing with our beautiful raspberry syrup is just a half shot. Okay, what I'm looking for is 12 and a half ml. So, I mean up to 15, but not more than 15, okay? Just a little bit of that. Perfect. All right, delicious, cool. So gin and tonic, and just in terms of the drink and the actual garnish, a nice little strawberry like that. If you want to do it simple, all right, just a straight incision in half like that works perfectly and fine. All right, so you can pop those in. Um, I would suggest probably doing two strawberries per drink. Okay, like that is perfect. Little tip as well, maybe a little bit of black pepper, well, that would be delicious. So strawberry and black pepper, great combination. Um, and then your beautiful mint. Um, generally, obviously, some fresh mint is great. A nice healthy sprig would be good, something along those lines. Now, a lot of people make the mistake by putting that directly into your drink. Just a gentle clap um, releases the oils and the aromatics of a mint or basil or rosemary or any other herb. So gentle smack. It is Valentine's Day, so give it a little bit harder, okay? Around the rim. Just the rim. And we'll pop that beautiful mint leaf in there too. Okay, so... Once you've uh, spanked your mint, chopped your raspberry, and looked at your lover in the face, you can serve them this, the love and tonic. Um, 50 ml of Whitley Neal Gin, some aromatic tonic, a little bit of your raspberry syrup, some chopped strawberries, the strawberries potentially can just go straight into her mouth or his mouth and um, with a nice little mint clapped sprig on the top with a gentle spank. Um, should obviously get that started on Valentine's Day. All right. And I mean, obviously I'm gonna say that's good, hey, but it's pretty decent. Okay, so that's the first one. Um, what I wanted to show you guys quickly, you guys can have a look on Google as well in terms of the process, but there's a simple process to actually cutting a rose or if you guys want to get creative, cutting a rose out of a strawberry. The first thing you need to do is push your fork into the back of the strawberry on the green side, okay? So just like that. And what you need to do is make three incisions on your the base of your strawberry. So if you can see that, one, two, three. And on each one, just fold back gently. What we're going to be making here is a strawberry rose. Now this is definitely going to be raising a couple eyebrows with your partner. 
do the exact same thing, but inside the gaps, all right, of the ones you've just made, and then a slice at the top. Very simple, okay? And obviously these tutorials are online, but that is a strawberry rose, okay? You do not need to buy roses for your missus or gentlemen this year. You buy strawberries and you make a gin and tonic with Tahora and Whitley Neal. Okay, and you can pop that straight in there and hopefully the spagnet mint and that beautiful strawberry rose leads to a better evening. Okay, so that is the start guys. That is our first drink for tonight. Um, I hope you enjoy that. That's about as simple as it's gonna get. Uh, gin and tonic, good garnish, how to elevate the experience. Ice cold uh, glasses, good ice, making sure you spank your mints, um, obviously feeding the raspberry, one raspberry to your partner, the other one in the drink. Um, and obviously you can obviously play around with the garnishing on that. So a lot of fun, you guys can obviously entertain your partners at home with that, okay? Second thing, uh, we're gonna move up in terms of complexity. Again, quite easy, only three ingredients needed. We're gonna be using Prosecco, Whitley Neal, um, and some fresh lemon. Let me grab the lemon out the fridge. Okay. All right, so a nice little healthy bag of lemons. You're only gonna need one for this. All right. All right, so a beautiful lemon like that. That's all you're gonna need. And remember in your fridge, you have put in there your flute glass. So grab that flute glass out. Okay, normally with your freezer, that should be nice and frozen, uh, but again, it's fine. Just obviously temperature when you start making sure that that's cold. So this is a very interesting drink. Uh, what we're gonna be making, it's called the Gin Seco. Um, on the travels to Australia and Dubai in 2019, or 20, yeah, 2019, uh, we discovered that flavored gin had already entered the market, but we needed something unique to enter the space. Um, along came the idea of combining the daytime drinker's favorite tipples. So gin with Prosecco or champagne. Uh, a very famous cocktail called the French 75, uh, available in every bar across the world. Uh, but what we've done is combined two very popular, very affordable products that is very easy to make at home. Flavored gin, uh, champagne or Prosecco, and a bit of fresh lemon. Okay, so a French 75 is four ingredients. It's champagne, sugar, citrus, and gin. And what we're doing here is because this is a sweetened gin and we have a bit of sugar syrup, we have all the ingredients to make our own version called the Gin Seco, um, or alternatively, we've called it the Berry Gin Seco for today, for Valentine's Day. Okay, so very simple with this, it's quite easy. Um, just to make sure that you guys are aware, the measurements are quite important. Um, if you do not want to put the gin in and you think it's too strong, you can just put these two, uh, but obviously it is Valentine's Day, and I guess, you know, after a really long and tough year, almost a year now since we've gone into lockdown, I suggest we put gin in it. All right, I think I think we all deserve it. Okay, so two to one ratio for your gin seco. It's 20 mils of gin. Um, so your 20 mils, roughly a, a shot. I would say almost a three quarter shot. Okay, so 20 mils in a flute glass. Um, again, you can obviously balance that and, and push that up depending on your spec, but it's basically just a two to one ratio. That is all you're gonna need. I'm gonna pop these out the way. Okay. All right, when you are using a lemon, slice it directly down the middle. A little cheat code for you guys. Um, I'm gonna pop this into another glass. Okay, a vessel of any sort, if you guys have a glass or a bowl of any sort. Now, one half of a lemon, okay, is a, I wanna say, a full lemon will be at just over 25 mLs. Okay, so what you're looking for is half the juice of that. Okay, so, there's two ways you can do this, either slice it down the middle and use a wedge, or the best technique for me and get the most juice, use a fork, straight into that, rotate that clockwise while turning the, the fruit anti-clockwise. So very simple, what it'll do is it'll break all the sediment, okay? Very easy, okay? And for me, that will actually create the most juice. If you're making any other cocktails at home, margaritas, gimlets, anything with a lot of citrus, that. You spend half an hour squeezing, again, it's for your Valentine, so you don't mind doing it. Um, but a little bit of fresh citrus like that, great, I'm gonna pop that off. But you can see that half a lemon will give you roughly pretty much a shot, okay, almost 25 ml. So we're looking for half of that, okay? Cool. That's all you need, all right? Okay, and then the last thing, 
the same ratio of sugar syrup all right to lemon juice okay so 20 10 and 10 all right and that is all you need for a gin seco again remember guys it's a dainty drink it's delicate um and it's there to impress your partner all right so the next thing um obviously a bit of prosecco or champagne uh we talk about the brunch consumer the daytime drinker um, and probably the biggest contribution to the gin boom internationally um, is vodka champagne wine as well as rosé drinkers um, and again everyone that drinks gin traditionally normally has that and enjoys a good daytime drink i don't think anyone doesn't like a good daytime drink so cheers to that okay no boy in there all right okay so what we're going to do is make sure you always tilt the glass the problem that some people always do is pour it directly in um, it's obviously going to balloon straight over if you do that always keep it to an angle all right up to three quarters like that okay all right the rest of the prosecco is meant to be downed um, i'm not going to be doing that just for production purposes tonight um it is friday evening and i've got a date to get to okay there we go so again to your specs guys you can add a little bit of lemon juice uh, to that you guys can add a little bit of the additional sugar syrup based on your spec based on your home spec at home but that again is the gin seco balance and what we're trying to create and all you're going to be doing to garnish guys is grabbing a couple raspberries okay i would say three is perfect okay so just grab three of those like that on a toothpick or a skewer of any sort okay and again, the gin seco. Okay, so very simple, I guess. Again, you do not, if you want to simplify that even further, you can eradicate the lemon completely. A little bit of gin a little bit of prosecco we've been doing a lot of brunches in london um over the summer period last year where we actually involved whitley neil into those bottomless brunches which are very popular um and obviously internationally so uh, for us gin seco it's a very popular serve i think prosecco works really well with flavored gin um again using it in your gin and tonics i mean there's no harm in doing something like this and adding a bit of your prosecco to your gin and tonic okay in terms of flavor um, but again, the gin seco, very delicious if you guys just want a, a good glass with a good flavored gin. So cheers to that. All right. Oh, tastes like there's going to be some bad decisions tonight. Okay. So there we go. That is the gin seco, guys. If we are looking for a bit of color in that as well, um, a good suggestion from our side would be uh, a bit of cranberry juice, um, a little bit of extra of the syrup, uh, even grenadine if you have grenadine works really well, uh, just to get that beautiful red color that you would like. Um, if you obviously, if you're all about looks, you know, I'm more about personality because it's a tough world out there. So unfortunately, you know, that's going to have to go on looks and taste. Okay. So guys, next thing, uh, we're going to get onto our little bit more complex serve. Um, the last one is our twist on a common classic and um, for those of you that are in the bar scene or know a little bit about cocktails um, when you think of gin and you think of raspberry there's one particular serve that stands out um, and that is the clover club um, a very elite society of men in uh, new york during prohibition um, and again a nod and a testament to that uh, using a traditional clover club kind of ratio uh, but with our whitley neal all right so we're gonna be making that traditional serve what is in there is normally gin raspberry syrup uh, fresh raspberries, egg white, and lemon. Um, I'll take you through that completely, uh, but served in a beautiful coupe glass over there. If you are not a fan of egg, um, there's other alternatives. There's vegan alternatives, aquafaba. Um, you even don't even need to use egg if you're not a huge fan. Um, but what it does provide is a consistency um, and obviously a beautiful layer uh, that you would see in all these professional photographs. And obviously tonight, you are professional uh, with your Valentine. Okay, so guys, your beautiful coupe glass, grab that out the fridge. All right, so that's all you're gonna need. Okay, so for this, gin, your coupe glass, that lemon that you had cut open earlier, your sugar syrup, okay. Okay. 
And the last ingredient, all right, is some eggs. When I say eggs, I mean just half an egg, okay? The rest of them, if she doesn't like your drink, you can just throw it at her, all right, or him, okay? So that's all you're gonna need, guys, those ingredients. That is your mix for the Cupid's Club that we're gonna be making. Um, as I said to you, a very, I wanna say very simple twist, but it is our more complex serve. Uh, for those of you at home, you will need a shaker. Um, if you do not have a shaker at home, okay you can use other instruments such as a jar um, an aluminium bottle um, i mean i've gone as far as using a pringles tin um it's a very desperate house party situations um obviously it was at home it wasn't during lockdown um as all of us did um so yes in terms of the serves i think a shake is perfect um alternatively you can use other mechanisms if you want to to shake this up all you're trying to do and all that is trying to do is dilute your drink and cook the egg white with citrus okay so what is happening is the the egg proteins are being cooked by the citrus in there and hence why the foam comes out in the drink and that is why obviously we put a bit of egg white into this okay so first things first guys okay and pop this to the side okay so first things first we are going to be doing something called a dry shake so when you are shaking egg whites you always make sure that it is a dry shake first um so what we're going to be doing first is your gin um i guess for a coupe it's normally 40 ml, but because obviously it's Valentine's Day, um, you know, you want to get your better half a little bit on it. We're going to do 50. Okay. Keep it nice and simple. All right. 50, 25, 25. Very easy. Okay. 2, 1, 1. Simple ratio. Um, it's your holy trinity of cocktails, spirit, citrus, and sugar. Okay. Not going to be hard to forget. All right. So two shots, gin, one shot of your bartender raspberry liqueur that you've made okay which would be great in anything to be fair okay now which is perfect for me is you have exactly one shot of lemon in your hand and that is going to be a full break of that with the fork okay so that is what you're doing so you're rotating clockwise turning this anti-clockwise and you're trying to get as much as you can out alternatively if you don't want to be barbaric like this you can buy a mexican elbow it is called um off amazon or one of the bar sites and it does it for you, okay? But it's a lot more fun doing this, huh? And engaging, okay? That is what it'll look like, and it gets all the juice out, all right? So I think we're good to go. That looks great. Um, last little trick for a Clover Club. I want you to throw a handful of raspberries, roughly five, six is okay. Pop those all in there for me, okay? A lot of people are scared of doing this. I'm gonna show you the best way to create this now. Um, I'm gonna pop this out and use this for you now. When you are using egg whites, okay, uh, for those of you, um, especially the guys out there that don't cook at all, um, when you are baking, very similar process, separating your white from your, from your yolk, okay? So break it like that, all right? So all we're looking for, guys, is without putting too much shell in the bottom, okay? Because it does happen, you know these things do. Um, keeping the egg yolk se separate while putting the white into the glass, that is perfect, I'm happy with that. Fun to throw away, unless you want to use it for an omelette the next morning. Okay, I do have one shell in mine, so just in case a shell comes out, you do not want shells in your shape. Okay. All right guys, so that's what you're looking for with your Cupid's Club. You're just looking for that egg white, obviously through that. We're gonna be using uh, one full egg for two drinks, or half an egg white for one drink. Okay, because we are only making one drink here, Again, if you would like to make doubles for your partners, you can obviously double the measurements that we provided for you, but I would use half an egg white, okay? All right, so. That's perfect, okay. All right, so half an egg white in there. Right, guys, now just be careful. Um, just something that you do need to note is because of the egg being cooked by the citrus, you're gonna feel a lot of compression, okay? So don't shake it aggressively, otherwise you're gonna be wearing this cocktail before you make it, okay? All right, so when you put it into a jar, when you put it into an aluminum container, please shake it gently, okay? It's a gentle shake, all right, to start, all right? You can look your partner in the eye, you can look away. I prefer to look them in the eye when you're shaking your cocktails, okay? All right, nice and gentle. All right, the dry shake, guys, is just to start the cooking process. What you do from there, you should be able to, to smell that beautiful flavor profile. You bruise the raspberries now. Throw some ice into there. The ice should go to about halfway. All 
perfect. Okay, we're looking for about halfway. All right, and give that a hard shake for about 15 seconds. All right, so roughly at that point is when you obviously show off what you've been doing on the off period. Yeah. All right. Beautiful. Okay, should have a beautiful pink or I would say kind of crimson color liquid at the end of that. Uh, the Clover Club, popping that straight in, nice little strainer. Um, if you obviously used another vessel, you can use a sieve uh, to obviously sieve that in. A beautiful coupe glass, if you do not have a coupe glass, um, a beautiful rocks glass will work really nicely too. And obviously a couple cubes of ice into that. But to this, look really nice. Just in a beautiful coupe glass. Get that right up to the rim. Okay. Okay. In terms of your garnish for this, guys, three little raspberries. Okay, straight from your pack. All right. With a toothpick. All right. You should get something along those lines. All right. Very easy. Okay. If you can try get a decent sized toothpick, so you don't, you can do it through the the middle. Otherwise, that is perfect. You can see that just on the front like that. And then the last thing, okay, like I said to you in the beginning, make sure you look your partner in the eye with any herbs. And just give it that little Valentine smack, eh? Okay, just release some of those oils of the mint. And pop that straight into there like that. Okay, guys, so the cupid's done. So, if we bring all of these across and down, uh, we are going to be running a little competition uh, with you guys, obviously, uh, doing this with me tonight. Uh, so, through the Tahora app, uh, with your Cupid's Club, uh, so with the final cocktail, uh, for any of you that obviously have recreated that and made it at home, uh, please could you post your images up on the app uh, as soon as you can. Um, you can tag my, my social media, Devin Tomlinson 90 or Whitley Neil Jin. Um, just so you can obviously reshare those um, if you if you do want to upload on social media. But the best uh, will nominate uh, the best Cupid's Club. So this uh, particular drink uh, on the app. And we'll be giving away a free bottle of the Whitley Neal Raspberry to one lucky person that's obviously joined uh, the class here today, guys. So hope you enjoyed that. Um, as I said to you from our side, uh, Whitley Neal Raspberry, one of our top selling SKUs, perfect for Valentine's Day. Um, great, obviously. Add these different elements into your drinking repertoire uh, it can obviously transversible between different products but a good gin and tonic great garnishing a gin seco with bubbly great for the daytime um, and obviously finish off your evening which you're definitely going to come right with a cupid's club all right guys so thank you very much uh, from me and tahora for watching and obviously joining um, look forward to obviously seeing you guys when we're out of this um, into the normal world whatever that is uh, stay safe and yeah happy drinking cheers guys